It's Tuesday, February 22nd, coming up live on The View. They're hair-raising hot topics, from Justin Bieber's new do to photos exposing what Travolta is sweeping under the rug. And as Livia descends into chaos, Barbara has a rare glimpse into the leader's son call a madman, Muammar Gaddafi. Plus, all week, the headline names in the most scandalous stories of their time are telling you where they are now. Today, Jessica Hahn, the former church secretary at the center of the sex scandal that brought down evangelist Jim Baker, is revealing what her life is like now. Then, No Ordinary Family star Julie Benz is revealing if she'll be pole dancing on Desperate Housewives again, and why people are convinced she's on Modern Family. And our series, Female Ask the Experts, continues when our financial gurus answer the questions you sent us about raising money for college, lowering your taxes, and paying off your credit cards. All that, hot topics, and more coming up live on The View. to The View. There are a lot of hot topics going on all over the world today. But I feel, let me get myself together, <laughs> that we have to start with this. <laughs> the shocking photo that proves beyond a shadow of a doubt that Justin Bieber has cut his hair. Stop it. <laughs> I love it. So Bieber, that is so no. cute. He's getting older. Look I it. love it. Pull yourself together. I'm trying. For charity. It's he not looks easy. Like it's for charity, right? And he looks like a. He looks like he's a getting a man now. He looks now. a little crazy Good in the picture. Him. I'm just saying he looks a little looks crazy. crazy. I he like it when it's down around. in his face. <laughs> but you know, there's more. You characters. need a long rest. I do. <laughs> yes. Not too. But no one will let me go. But in other hair. News. <laughs> Paparazzi snapped a picture of my friend John Travolta on a beach in Hawaii without his piece. Uh, so why doesn't Bieber donate his bangs to Travolta? <laughs> that Travolta would be a looks good... like he's saying, why are you taking my picture? Sure. I love John Travolta no matter what. Piece. So do I. But you know, a, 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 a balding man who doesn't have his hair piece is like a woman going out without her makeup. You know, we put well, it on. It's even worse. worse. Yeah, because you, you, you have hair without my makeup all the time. See, I just love bald, though. I think <laughs> that's all right, baby. There was a sister over said, yeah. <laughs> she was about to do a big clap, and she's like, oh, sorry. No. I, you know, he's getting older. I think he doesn't feel that the need to yeah. pretend that he's something. He's not. God bless John Travolta, child, because if he looks this good, I want to look that he's good. You know, he is a cute man. Justin. That's right. If you stop crying over Justin Bieber, you would look okay. I can't help it, Barbara. She's so upset. I feel She's got the fever for the that fever. hair just says so much. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Oh, yes. It's like... If I shaved my head, would you feel the same way? Would you cry? No. Yes, I would. Yes, you would? would? Yes, if you shaved your head, yes. because those locks mean so much to a lot of it people. It would be tweetable. Would be. Really? Yes. It would be tweeting. Yes. Really, yes. him is, is he, I mean, the, the tweens that follow him. Right. They must be wild now, because they're crazy, you know. And the, we don't I mean, they're not going to get death threats. Yes. Yes. His well, barber it's... must be in the witness protection program. <laughs> or, I mean, you know, I if he start, if, you know, because hair always shows up on eBay. Yeah. So it'll be very interesting to see uh -huh. if this becomes a trend. But his hair will show up on eBay. No, hair does. His, I think yes, the there are more yes. important yes. things in the news so, today, Barbara. Yeah. But you know, we we're coming to. But this is big deal. Okay, you're yeah, right. Just you big know. Big you're right. You're right. Now, silly massive. Silly that's well, yeah. you know. Okay. You know. <laughs> massive protests have descended into Libya and put them into chaos. Hundreds are dead, and once again, the people are questioning the sanity of their leader, Muammar Gaddafi who's made several <laughs> very strange <laughs> statements around, but a bizarre TV statement to prove that he hasn't fled the country. Now, Barbara, yes. you have had access to this very interesting man. 
Is yeah. he as bizarre as we think? Is he crazy, Barbara? Is he crazy? Well, the picture that you saw last was was taken yesterday mm -hmm. uh, outside because they, they had it had been reported that he had left the country and gone to Venezuela, and so he Looks gave like this Joey kind Brown. of vague, uh, vague thing. No, I haven't left with the white umbrella. I was going to go to the square, but I couldn't because it was raining, etc. Okay, I have done three interviews with Gaddafi over the years. Probably the the most. I can't say famous, but the one that people remember most was one done in 1989. He has been the ruler of this country for 41 mm -hmm. years. And when I went to do the interview, it was so bizarre. It was done in a tent. Do you remember when he came to this country a few years ago? Yeah, he wanted yeah, to yes. be in a, in a tent. tent yeah. It mm -hmm. was in the middle of Tripoli. There was one guard outside. You came into this grassy area. Maybe we have some B-roll of it. Um, and uh, there was a house that we had bombed that he said that his uh, adopted daughter had been right. killed in. Mm -hmm. We were taking reaction because they had bombed in West Berlin. And you can see he had a, a, a baby a camel. He was wearing a cape, white mules, and a green shirt, the national color of, of, um, Libya. Uh, of Libya. Libya. And uh, he had a camel, a baby camel, because he drank camel's milk. Okay, oh. fine. He I'm had, right out of the camel? Uh, well, I think <laughs> they squeezed it the way you would, the way you would... Yes, it had a screw top. <laughs> That's disgusting. He, he was trying to show that he was a tribesman. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. at yeah. that okay. time, he felt that he was going to become the ruler of all of the Arab world. Right. He had that kind of ambition Hitlerian. for himself. Sure. Uh, well... Today, Germany, tomorrow, the world. It's similar. In a sense, yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. And at one point, I had said, because we had been asking the question you asked, are you crazy? And so I summoned up my courage. You will see this inside this tent between his white, my pink, and the tent. You could get a headache. Right, this is that piece. Can I ask you something very directly, which may seem rude? In our country, we read that you are unstable. We read that you are mad. <laughs> you know that those things have been printed. Why do you think this is? Other leaders are disliked. But they're not as controversial as you are. It is not because of me that I am Gaddafi. It is because of uh, certain uh, circumstances uh, surrounding the issue. Does it make you angry? Uh, of course, uh, it irritates me. Nevertheless, I consider or do believe that the majority of the ordinary people in the four corners of the globe do love me. Well, they may love him in the four corners of the world. We haven't seen that they love him at all in his country or anywhere else. No. Did you think he was crazy? Yeah, I mean, he, I he definitely don't know how you felt safe crazy there. Like I think a it's fox, maybe. Well, and I think that you know, next to him. I mean, Mubarak looks like a lamb next to this guy in terms of what he's been doing, right. too. I mean, hiring, hiring mercenaries to go and kill the protesters in his own land right now certainly calls but, for something oh, strong. So Barbara, I hope that our president makes a strong statement today, not waste another life to be left in the ground, shot dead. I hope that there's a strong statement today made to this man to step down. When you interviewed him, because I, I don't know, for me, he just, he looks... A little evil. I think it's the bad Jerry curl. Was that what that was? <laughs> the, the like that? But, when, but when you interview uh, these kinds of men and, and you say to them, you know, the world considers you unstable, was there a little bit of fear that you had just even being there? Um, I, I'm going, uh, because I, I think I'm, I'm a, we were talking the other day about female journalists. Yeah. Um, and, and I have never been abused like poor Laura uh, Logan. I think you just have a different kind of courage um, to be able to ask that kind of question. I also want to point out, when you've seen Saif, S-A-I-F, his son, whom he wants to be his son and heir, the way Mubarak wanted Gamal to be, mm -hmm. that's not going to happen. This, I met all the children. He had eight sons, has eight sons. This is the second oldest and the one who probably uh, wants to be in charge. Did I think he was crazy? No. Did I think that he was weird? Uh, did I think that he was um, a, a somebody who had ambitions beyond his own temperament? Yes, and as we see now, for 41 years, he's kept these people oppressed. Was there ever a time you didn't feel as though you'd leave there? I mean, after talking with him, you, did you hold back you on anything? I mean, at all. I would... I would feel threatened I in some way. I can't remember when I Well, the when question, I, I think asking a question is different because he can answer it any way he wants. 
Or not. So, right. or not, answer it. But when you're in the middle of a mob, that's a whole other sure, level that's of, right. of it's difficult. Like, yeah. 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 Well, this is going to be ongoing. You know, this it's not settled yet, and so we're going to keep an eye on it. Yeah. Uh, you know, we've got a lot of viewers in New Zealand and in Australia, mm -hmm. and we want to send our thoughts and prayers <laughs> yeah. to the folks of Christchurch, New Zealand, which was rocked by mm -hmm. a 6.3 magnitude earthquake. Mm -hmm. Now, we know that they had an earthquake, uh, I think, two months ago. Yes. That was equally large, but this one was shallow, which means it was much closer to the surface, which is why the insane damage that yes. you're seeing Terrible. occurred. So, we, you know, I don't know if they can see us, but... We just want to let y'all know we're thinking of you. Yeah. And we're going to go and come right back because we have more hot topics, and that's just the way we are. Until their child is potty trained. But Elizabeth, you've got a segment on Good Morning America tomorrow? Yeah, we're actually dealing with in the 8 a.m. hour on Good Morning America tomorrow, Wednesday. Um, I've been talking to some parents and experts about fast track methods of potty training, that parents are rushing to right. potty train their kids before the, the age of one. So wow. it's really yeah, interesting. Can't see that. Long term that effects. Is crazy. Mm -hmm. it's, it's interesting. Yeah. Now, Barbara, you, you saw an article that you wanted to ask us about. I do, because three out of the five of us are comedians, although you and I are truly the most funny. <laughs> oh, yeah, we However, we keep it in check. Okay. Yes, we like to laugh. So, uh, there was a 25th annual South by Southwest Film and Music Festival, and I read about this in, this morning in the New York Times, and it said of the 31 comedians in this year's lineup, there was only one woman. Her name is Tig Nataro, and they were saying, unfortunately, we had just three female comedians. So how come there are so few comedians? Is it that hard? Female comedians. Well, yeah, you know, think about are, it. There are fewer and fewer. Girl, girls are taught to act like a lady, boys are taught boys will be boys, mm -hmm. girls are told to behave themselves and just sit there and color. So there's no exact encouragement with a lot of girls to be funny. What about you three? Well, we were different. I mean, my mother, no one ever told me to shut up. No one. Maybe that was a mistake, but I was different from as a kid. No one told me anything. But what about the two of you? You both, you know, risked it. But it was all, I know. I know. Growing up, I don't know about you two, but uh, doing it in L.A. when I was doing it, it, it was always hard to get time on stage because they didn't put a lot of females up on stage. You would see a whole lineup and maybe see one didn't some, female. Didn't some change their names to have a guy's first name so they could so get they a better time on stage? Jamie Foxx did that. He right. changed his name, but um, to yeah, a was girl's it, name. He changed it so that it was kind of androgynous, so you wouldn't know uh, who he was. Yeah. Well, what about you, Whoopi? How I started that? in the theater, so it's yes, not a, yes, you know, it's age. not a, yeah. but it's not a surprise. I mean, it's not a, a big surprise because most people <laughs> don't think of female comedians because for a while we had a spate of them. We had Toadie Fields yeah. and... And well, uh, spread out a while, Joan well, and but, Phyllis. But when we were kids, it was Joan and Phyllis right. and Toadie. I mean, there were a bunch of them. And this, the humor they were doing was self-deprecating. De yeah. Excuse me, deprecating. Yeah. You know, women are not doing that kind of humor anymore, so it's harder to find them, I think, when they're, and when they're strong and they're just as in your face as the male comedians. It's not something that uh, is sexy. You stand yeah. at a microphone uh, and you're, you're in, ch in charge of the room. The boys shrivel up from that. They don't they really don't go that. for that. They don't want to mm -hmm. see that. So you have to decide whether you want to have a career and be funny or get a man a lot of times. Is it well, more, let me ask you this, though. I have both because I yeah, go for Jewish go guys it. who love a funny woman. Is it more difficult, though? I have... Sorry, <laughs> That's my secret. Is it more difficult, though, to be... <laughs> Because it's, it's a night job, right, for the most part in the club. Yeah. Can you be a mom? Uh, does it have to do with being a parent? Like, That's if you have a young thing. child, you can't necessarily be out. Yeah, but you can it, take right? it. You can, you can, I, can, you, I take my kid. I used to take my kid everywhere, yeah. whether it was in the theater or in a club. It didn't matter to yeah. me. And, they, and the club owners knew it was okay, so they didn't I mind. But we'll be talking about this even more. Yeah, okay. Because we're done. it's one of those things. But, hey. I know that we're speaking specifically of New York, and I'm talking to specifically New Yorkers, but we are rejoicing this morning at the news that former Nugget Carmelo Anthony is putting on a New Yay! York Knicks jersey. Welcome, Carmelo! Welcome, Carmelo! Welcome, 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 Welcome! And when you get here, come to The View, because you will not find five more hot women who love you behind. Yes. Now, 
That's right. What is love you, Lala. Lala. Trust me. <laughs> Once you meet this young man, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Now, when we come back, our week-long series, Where Are They Now?, continues with the former church secretary at the center of evangelist Jim Baker's sex scandal, Jessica Hahn. We'll be right back. <laughs> I have kept quiet. I have not tried. I have not been hostile toward Jim Baker or the ministry. I have not even commented about Jim Baker. My comment is that I want this thing over. And if the only way to handle it is by people fighting and making accusations, then I feel sorry for, for these people. Well, all this week, we're talking to people who made headlines in the most scandalous news stories of their time to find out where are they now. Well, our next guest was thrust into the spotlight in 1987 when televangelist Jim Baker announced that he was stepping down as head of the PTL ministry. He ran the PTL ministry with his wife, Tammy Faye, until he had to resign as a result of a sexual encounter with the woman you then saw, his 20-year-old church secretary, Jessica Hahn. And that was almost 25 years ago. Jessica Hahn is here today to tell us how her life is now. Welcome. Thank you very much. So, I want to make clear that you never, you did not bring the story up. You, it, it was not you who wanted the whole scandal. You were 27 years old. It was seven years after the uh, affair with Jim Baker. So, what have you been doing since? Well, um, this, after the story broke at 27, I, you know, naturally posed in Playboy. I got a lot of flack for that. But um, that was seven, eight years later. I did not break the story. Jim Baker said, turn on CNN. And I said, uh, I don't believe you. He goes, no, the story's going to break. Uh, what I've been doing since then, I, I met a man, uh, Ron Levitt. He created Married with Children. And in I 1991, had, right? In 1991, uh-huh. And uh, we fell deeply in love. Uh, I stayed with him 16 years, mm. and he, he in, uh, in uh, January, found out he had cancer, and this is three years ago, and he, he passed away in February, February 10th, so there was only a month. He waited till after Christmas because he's that giving, and he didn't want anybody to know, and my life literally crumbled. I mean... Elizabeth Barber, everybody, it crumbled so bad that I went into a depression so badly, I did not get out of bed for three years. I literally curled up in a fetal position, went into a depression that I did not know how I was going to get out because he was my rock. But now you are all right? Now I climbed out of it. And one thing I want to tell women, if you're in a depression, mm -hmm. just when you're about to give up, a miracle happens. Really? And my miracle? my miracle was Frank. Frank is Frank Lloyd is a man I'm engaged to. He is Ron's best friend. He I've known Frank for 16 now now uh, almost 20 years. That's he was awesome. always with Ron Levitt, and um, we bonded over Ron. But so your life pretty much has been lived through your relationship with these men whom you loved. Yes, yes, and I loved dearly. And Ron was just amazing to me. Here he is, he created Married with Children, he created Silver Spoons, he, he worked on the Jeffersons, Happy Days, he was, right. and here he is a humble man, and, and he and I fell in love, I mean real love. Well, when, oh, you, were, when you were with, uh, your affair with Jim Baker, you know, Now, let like, me get this straight, this okay. wasn't an affair. This was, um, unlike, I, 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 don't, I don't want to be cruel or anything. Okay. But in, in your book, Audition, you had, you had um, an affair with a senator. And this is about you, my dear. This okay. is not about me. But, okay. but what I want to say. That was an audition. But what I'm going to say is my my situation was. <laughs> Where are we 
now? <laughs> Where are we now is that I had an encounter. It was 15 minutes. In a uh, what did you see in him exactly? Because well, I mean, what I was, was just back, no this was a con, this was a con, exactly hot. No, this what, was a consensual no, or non consensual. It was not consensual. It was not consensual. He said it was. Yeah. No, oh. he did say it was. What it was was he called me up. Him and a man named John Fletcher, who is another preacher, mm -hmm. called me up and said, Jessica, will you come down to babysit? Mm -hmm. Now wow. these guys, since I was fourteen, were rock stars to wow. me. They were, they love God and knew God better than I could ever know God. And I love God so much that I thought that they knew better than me. Mm -hmm. So I went, I jumped on a plane to Florida and um, what happened was they had it, they right. had it set up, arranged. Jim Baker said that Tammy Faye was, you know, not, not close to right, him right, and so right. forth. And he needed to feel like a man and so forth. And and something happened in that hotel room. It was, and 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 I don't call it rape. Mm. What I call it is, if God, if God is, if these are men of God, they must know God better than I do, and it must be. So you were doing well, what well. did he do to you exactly? What it was both there? of them. We had just, sex. It was oh, both of them both in of one them day. Men. Oh wow! This was what I want to know. As a, as a woman who loved God, right. these two men who profess to love God, who did this to you, right. did it shake your faith at all? Not even a minute, because this is not God's mess. This is not of God. When people sin, that's not of God. This is our doing. We choose what you we do. You choose that. I didn't choose it, but I went along with it because I didn't know. I was very vulnerable. In my heart, I'm a good person. I have a lot of love, and I just wanted to love God. I was so in love, and, you know, that's what so I what had. Did, they, about did they ever say, this is for God? Yes. You're, doing, Jim you're Baker sleeping said, with me Jim right Baker, now for Jim God? Baker, Jim Baker's words to me were, when you help the shepherd, you're helping the sheep. Oh, what a line. Oh. As God is my witness. Ugh. And did I, anybody ugh. yell, oh, God, that night? Is what I'm on. But what do you, when, when, you, when you hear about these, these pastors, these big, huge pastors that take advantage of people like that, whether they be young women or young men, right. what do you think when you hear I this think kind of that, stuff? I think that many people worship the messenger and not the message. Yeah. I think many people need to realize this is not God's. God's, God's not trying to hurt people. He had some hold on his constituency, though. Right. Jim Baker but, did. But the Jim Baker his... was a very powerful man, and yeah. at 14 years old, every morning when I was getting ready to go to my mm -hmm. church job as a secretary, I would watch Jim Baker. And in fact, Tammy and Jim, I wanted to be their kid. Well, you know, this is what I want. Did you... Tammy Faye passed away. Yes. Uh, we heard that she spoke to you before yes. she passed. What was that conversation? Tammy like and um, Ron Jeremy and Tammy did the surreal life together. Right. Oh, yeah. And ironically, <laughs> and Tammy's so funny, she she attracted everybody. And Ron Jeremy <laughs> took, I Ron just, Jeremy's this. a porn star. Get this. Oh, yes. <laughs> so, so Ron Jeremy goes, Jess, Tammy wants to talk to you. Will you talk to her? And he said, of course. So Ron Jeremy right. hooks us up on the phone. So me and Tammy have a personal conversation. Right. And not just once, but twice. Why does Ron Jeremy have your phone number, girl? <laughs> <laughs> Do we have time to hear? What did she say so to you? Tammy, so Tammy, Tammy Faye says to me, Jessica, you know what? If I saw you, and she said this on Larry King also, she said, Jessica, if I saw you, I would hug you. I, I would just, wow. I would cry. Oh, I would hug you. She yeah, said she this would. on Larry too. What she says, woman. I would hug you. And I said, I would cried, naturally. We cried. And I said, Tammy, I don't want you to go away. And I said, I always wanted to be your kid. You were bacon fudge. Yeah. I wanted right. that wholesome right. kind of life. You know, we, we thank you. You've been very honest with us. Oh, you think my story was interesting? Please. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> nothing. Read her book. You've been very honest with us. We appreciate your coming. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate today. it. All this week, we are going to be talking to people who made, uh, who made news for uh, reasons that... Uh, may be very dubious. Uh, Kate O'Kalen's going to be on with us. Paula Jones is going to be on with us tomorrow. Um, and 
Uh, John Bobbitt's going to be on with us on Friday. Oh, boy. Yes. Again, Jessica, we appreciate Thank your you, honesty, Barbara. and I'm glad things are better for you now. Thank we you all are. Nice. She and, uh, lost 50 pounds, Barbara. She, oh, well, that's another right, subject. Jessica, did you lose 50 pounds? Oh, I lost 40 pounds since 40, October 25th. I got on the bike. I pedaled. I can't move this chair. chair. I pedaled your way 40 pounds less. Well, well I there you go. Pounds. You, you look great. great. You look beautiful. You have to go on the truck. Yeah. family as the mother of a family of superheroes Yay. and even though she has super speed she let a big secret get away I know take a look Jim is there something you want to tell me I've already broken five of these maybe you should wash them no, that's not what I'm talking about the serum where is it I don't know I didn't take it well, someone did I put it back in the dresser but now it's gone oh you don't think someone at the party do you know what this means? We could be responsible for giving someone superpowers. Please welcome back Julie Benz. Yeah. Oh. you were here you were brunette yes now you're blonde you've been a redhead yes. do, do you I'm find you. yeah you, okay so do you find that uh, men are attracted to a certain type of uh, hair color I uh, found that I attracted different types of men depending yeah. on what my hair color really? was yeah really? as a brunette I attracted the more serious guy that wanted to get married and you know the really good men okay. as a blonde <laughs> um, <laughs> as a blonde I, I attract more of the uh, non-serious Really? Which, the which would you rather be? You're blonde now. Um, I prefer brunette. being brunette. I What's like being brunette. Yeah. Yeah. I prefer being the, the redhead gets so much attention. Yeah. I don't know how you deal with it. Oh, it's a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I got so much attention as a redhead. I was wearing a hat all the time. Really? Yeah, really? it was too intense. But is this you wear blonde now for the show? For the yeah, for I'm, the I'm naturally blonde. Yeah, I want to say. So yeah. am I. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tired of you dyeing your hair. You well, know, the curtains you match the color. drapes, and in my case, all the time. Yeah. 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 And you I also do. have superpowers, don't you? Yeah. I do, I fast. do. I'm super fast. Super yes. fast. And Michael Chiklis, who was just here, he has super strength. He plays yes. your husband. But you like your speed. You say that the super speed is perfect for you. It is. I'm a bit of an exercise fanatic, and um, I love being challenged physically in a role. And so for me, running is is just natural. I mean, I always say I have two speeds in running. I either walk or I sprint. Mm, so, um, and you it, should it, run it, sometimes. <laughs> you want to <laughs> Last year as a blonde, you were on Desperate Housewives. Yes. And you were also playing a lesbian stripper. Yes. Uh, maybe it was the blonde hair, not too sure. <laughs> you ended up in love with uh, Adena Delaney's character. So, I don't know what my question is. Where, <laughs> where, where am I going? I where this was going? Was going. Was going somewhere. <laughs> well, there was how, a how do you, how do you study for that part? That's what, I think that's, that's what I'm getting for. Thank you, Joy. You're that's where I was going. Very good. Yes. How do you study to play a lesbian stripper? Um, <laughs> I didn't study. You know, if you're a method actor. <laughs> Or you make out with a lot of girls. No. Um, yeah. No, uh, you know, for Don't me... Don't say that, because on this show, people start kissing you in a second. Yeah. <laughs> so you're sandwiched oh. right here by yeah, the kissing. Right, kissing. Yeah. <laughs> you two kissing bandits right here. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I'm in enough trouble today. <laughs> this is so funny. You, you did. You were on. But, you, but wait a minute. That oh, stripper please. thing, I just yes. want to follow up. Because somebody told me that you then have, now you have a stripper pole in your house. Which oh. is because of the role. So is yes. that, that sounds like an interesting exercise, isn't it's it? A, it's a great form of exercise. It is. And, 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 it's, and it's a lot of fun. <laughs> I came to do this show a while ago before I got hired to, to be the moderator. And the segment they were doing had a stripper pole in it. I remember and you did that. And Joy... I tried we, to get up. She had to push me up by the behind. But, she got a lot of exercise because it was like weightlifting. Yeah. But for me, nothing. 
It's a lot of core work, I think. It is. It, it's a lot of upper body strength, yeah. um, and it's fun. I mean, it's. Uh, I have my pole in the garage. It's not in yeah. a sexy room or anything. It's so funny. Firehouse pole. <laughs> when you when you know that you, when you came to do Desperate Housewives, I think that came at a really good time because you uh, had gotten killed off on uh, Dexter. Mm -hmm. Your character was yeah. Rita, and you were married to a serial killer, Dexter. Right. Yes. But your character had gotten killed off by another serial killer, and it was this very gruesome scene where you were in a tub full of blood. Mm -hmm. How did you? How, how? What was your reaction when they told you that you were? going to be killed off. Yeah. I was shocked. Yeah. Um, they told me an hour before they put out the script, so oh, oh, I man. had no preparation <laughs> for it. Yeah, and uh, you know, my first reaction was the obvious reaction, which was, oh my God, I just lost my job. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, right. You know, and, uh, and, then, um, and then having to film um, for 10 days without telling, the crew didn't know, nobody knew. Mm. It was very difficult. <laughs> But uh, in the end, it was such a dramatic moment in, in, the, in the arc of the show, and a very monumental moment for the show. Yes. So it was good for you. So yeah. It turned out great. Yeah. Yeah. It's a yeah. hit show. Yeah. Yes, thank you. And it's a fascinating, yeah. And you, you know, she used to be a skater. Did, I, did you guys know that? She used to be an ice skater. She's yeah. a real oh, yeah, She's oh, a real ice skater. Look at you. Julie, so when you, we, thank you for coming. When you come back, I don't know what kind of hair color you're going to be. We can't wait see to see it. Bring the pole with you. Bring the pole. We'll do the pole. With you. There you go. Our thanks to Julie Benz. A new episode of No Ordinary Family airs tonight at 8 p.m. on ABC. When we come back, our series V Mail Ask the Expert continues when our money experts answer the questions you sent us. Money experts. the experts lets our viewers ask the questions and today our duo of financial gurus have answers to the money questions you sent us. Please welcome the author of The Automatic Millionaire and Debt Free for Life, David Bach, and financial expert Alexis Glick. Welcome. Okay, Thank you. we've got some questions preguntas. Our first question is for you, David. Take a look. Hi, I'm Michelle from Brooklyn and I have credit card debt. And recently I've been receiving letters about debt consolidation. Is this something I can trust or is it a scam? Well, Just say no. <laughs> no. Wait, 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 assume when these things come in the mail to you that they're a ripoff to start. Here's the key. You don't have to do a debt consolidation loan to lower the interest on your credit cards. Oh. If you have high, if you have a high credit score right now, the good news is there are credit card offers right now with, for people who have a score over 720, you can get a 0% interest rate credit card right now for a year to 18 months. So if you've got a high interest rate credit card, you should switch to one of these new cards. Now, I know there's going to be a small transfer fee, but you'll save a fortune. If you don't have a good credit score, because a lot of people are watching like, I'm behind on my credit cards, I have a bad credit score, what can I do? Mm -hmm. There are two specific programs that credit card companies offer right now that can lower your rates down to below 5%. Oh. In some cases, 0%. The two programs are called a forbearance plan or a debt management plan. And there are millions of people right now enrolled in these programs with the credit card companies that have lowered the rates down to 0%, waived the annual fees, and waived the over-the-limit fees. So those are two credit programs. Credit cards that they already have, or they have to sign up for a new one no, in order to qualify? No, that they already for have. So okay. again, forbearance plan or debt management plan, two great programs. Right. To look you just have one credit card, really. Just one is enough. It's so yeah. much better. Yeah. So, so much work better. on your own consolidation. Right. Alexis, okay. this next question is for you. Take okay. a look. Hi, my name is Rose Williams, and I'm from Fairfield, New Jersey. And with tax what are some deductions that people overlook that could possibly save them money? Oh, there are so many tax deductions that are overlooked. Child care expenses, one of the key ones. Some of the companies that you work for have a flexible spending dependent care account where you can put up to $5,000. But even if you don't have one of those, you can get all kinds of tax deductions for child care charitable contributions. Save your receipts. If it's a receipt over $250 or more, you've got to get it from the organization. But you can deduct as much as 14 cents per mile if you're going back and forth, you've done a bake sale at school. There's all kinds of things that you can do. There's oh. a great one, though, for job seekers. Millions of people out of work. If you're looking for a job in a career that you've been in, you can deduct, if it's 2% above your income, you can deduct the 
fee of looking for a job, whether that's travel expenses, whether that's meals. But deducted resume, from what? Probably. You're not working. How is the money well, to deduct you yeah, from? You're absolutely right. If yeah. you, depending on if you've been working for some period of the year, uh -huh. you can deduct it from whatever I income see. you've but generated. But where do you go to find out these deductions? You go to irs.gov, but there's also ones for college okay. savings, the first time home buyer tax credit. There's a ton. Do news. your homework. The real key here is it's an itemized deduction. So, so <laughs> many Americans don't file itemized deductions. So, go to irs.gov and learn about all these deductions because people leave billions on the table sure. over across the country because Absolutely. of these deductions by sure. not itemizing. So, get into the detailed plan. David, this next one is for you about credit score. Hi, I'm Kelly from Napa, California, and I was just wondering that if I have a low credit score and want to raise it, that what are some ways that I can do that? All right, great news is you can raise your credit score up to 100 points in less than six months, and that can change your entire life. So How do you get your score? So, so just in first case of all, everyone know. should go to www.annualcreditreport.com okay. to get their report. All three credit bureaus have to give you one report a year for free. Biggest thing to do to raise your credit score, make sure there's no mistakes on it because there's mistakes on many, many credit reports, oh. and that can lower your credit score. Like what? What are they missing? Everything. I mean, there could be identity theft. There could yeah. be a social security number could be wrong. They could show that you have a late payment when you don't have a late payment. And the key thing here is to pull all three credit reports and credit scores. But here's what I can tell you. There's five ways that you can raise your credit score. <laughs> This is what determines your credit score. 35% is based on paying your bill on time. So the sooner you get on time with your bills, the faster your score goes up. 30% is based on the amount you owe. So when you pay that debt down, that increases your credit score. 15% is the length of your credit history. Do not close old accounts. People are closing those accounts down. That brings your credit score down. Keep those old accounts open. You mean your credit card accounts? Your credit card. Oh. So keep them of, open. You have to actually keep them open now because if you don't keep them open, it reduces your credit history and that lowers your credit consolidating score. consolidating brings credit score up. Right. Right. Which is one of the reasons why I said I actually don't think you should do credit right. consolidation. Okay. You should just pay the cards down, leave, them, them, leave down. them open. Well, I, I don't think you want to have a portfolio of eight credit cards. No. You know, you, you need a couple. So don't close them once they're paid off. Don't, yeah, careful. don't close Closing them. Leave off. them open. And Got then it. also you need multiple types of credit. So you need to not just have a credit card, but you need, like, you know, if you have a student loan or you have a, or a car loan or home loan, they, the banks want to see that you can pay multiple forms of credit over a period of time. Okay, okay. great. Let's do the next Alexis, one. another one about 529s. Hi, my name is Dan Rose. We're from Columbus, Ohio. This is my wife, Jessica, with a question. We have an 18-month-old daughter at home, and we keep hearing about 529 plans to save for college. So can you tell us what that is and um, when we should start using it? 529s are fantastic. I've got three little boys. A great way to save money for college. You can save $13,000 a year if you're a single parent, up to $26,000 if you're a married couple. Wow. It's fantastic. You can put it in take it out federally, tax-free. There, In some states, if you look it up to, you can get a tax deduction on a 529 contribution. It's an excellent way to save for so college. So you put 13, a single person could put $13,000 in, tax-free, the child then become, uh, comes of age and then... It's not federally tax-free when you put your money in initially, but it's federally tax-free when you pull it out. On but end. depending oh. on the state... You might get a tax deduction on that state when you put your money in. It's a fantastic yes. way to save for college. And preserve education, and you really. Can do and it, it through your the payroll. Parents name. That's really key, too, because, you know, the old accounts go in the kid's name. This account stays in the parent's name, so if your kid's not a good kid, Guess what? They don't get the you money. Can give it and, stays and, and, you can, and if you, I have three thank kids, you. you can have one and move it down to your other yes, kids. Yes, it transfers. Thank you both so much. Sure. I want to thank David Bach and Alexis Glick for being here. Everyone's financial situation, of course, is different, so check with a financial advisor regarding your particular situation. We'll be right back. <laughs> you don't even know what's going on here. <laughs> Have a great day. Take a little time to enjoy the view.